You see how it's adding that cyan? Unfortunately, the sky is not that color. It's a bluer blue. So we're going to have to add some magenta to give some blue. All right? And the black, if I add black, it's going to be darker. If I, if I remove black, it's going to be lighter. But as I remove black, notice how my cyan starts shining through. And so I have to go back to my magenta and add a little bit more of that. Okay. I don't want to make it too blue. Actually, you guys can do whatever you want, all right? However it is that you like it. But I like it a little bit more realistic. I don't want it that bright. I just want to add that je ne sais quoi. Okay. This is the color that I like, what I've chosen. Now, I need to add some dimension. I could leave it like that. I don't even mind it. It's a little bit of a blue, but I want to give a little bit more depth, and I'm going to do that with clouds. Now, you can choose clouds from another file, another photo, from the Internet. I don't know. Whatever you want. I'm going to show you how to do it with the clouds in Photoshop. All right. First thing, click on New Layer. Make sure that there's a blank layer. This is very important. You go up to Filter, Render, and you go to Clouds. And Photoshop is just going to plop a layer of clouds here for you. All right? The problem with this layer of clouds is that Photoshop has put it flatly. And as you can see from my image, it is a three-dimensional image with leading lines towards the back. So I need to add perspective to those clouds. How am I going to do it? Extremely easily, believe it or not. Uh, what I'm going to do is select the layer that my clouds are on. I'm going to hit Control a or Command-A on a Mac to select everything. You can see the little marching ants around here. Once that's selected, I'm going to hit Control x or Command-X on a Mac to cut them out of here. Now, this is the trick. You must leave a blank layer here. If you don't have that blank layer, the perspective is not going to work as easily. Okay, so once this blank layer is there and it's selected, we're going to go up to Filter and Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point is going to let me copy and paste things into perspective. All I have to do is show Photoshop what the perspective is going to be. So you see how there's these lines that go into the back of the image? So what I want to do is I want to start off maybe somewhere around here and click and just go right into the vanishing point, trying to follow these lines right here, and then see how kind of follow somewhere around here. Guys, it does not have to be exact, okay? It's just somewhere around that. And Photoshop is then going to create this beautiful mesh for me. All right, once that is done, I have to hit Control V because my clouds are still in my clipboard. Remember when we cut them out? I hit Control V, this computer's gonna think a couple seconds, and it's going to paste the clouds right into this image. I wish for some weird reason that it would paste it right into the mesh, but no. I actually have to move it and paste it into the mesh, move it around the mesh myself. It's a little bit tricky. Sometimes it takes a little fidgeting around for you to get into this mesh. The blue line is my mesh, and all I'm going to do is click and drag and move it. Let it think sometimes. Uh, it's really processor intensive, and this is my little mini. So. And move it. Just bear with it, guys. Right into my my mesh, and it'll eventually work. Trust me on this one. Okay, there we go. And all we're gonna do is move it around until we're happy with it. I know it looks a little bit freaky right now, but the important part is that we have the perspective. I'm gonna click OK. Okay, and now I have a perspective of masks going into the back of the of a mask of clouds going into the back of the image. Now, all I need to do is move this mask over from this selective color that I did, and I do that by holding the Alt key, clicking on the mask, and just dragging it up. And now I have this these cool masks that are going down. Actually, it doesn't look that. It looks like an evil Ireland right now. But I need to 
change the blending mode so that these darks and these whites will blend into that blue that I changed uh, in my selective color layer. So I do that by just selecting this the clouds layer, going up to my blend modes, and switching it over to soft light. And as you can see, as soon as I switch it over to soft light, it fuses into that selective color layer, creating these pretty little clouds uh, with dimension. And what I could do, which I love to do, is actually lower the opacity a little bit so the effect is not as pronounced. And I'm also going to go down to my selective color layer. And I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit just so it does not look too real. I mean, uh, real. Uh, too fake. All right, so I lower that around there. Okay, and I think I'm extremely happy with this. I hit Alt and my original layer to see the before and after, before and after. And that, guys, is how you fix a blown sky. Let's see your work. Post it up on our website, lightenupandshoot.com.